And to reiterate the strategy that Debbie talked about, today you're going to hear a lot about um, sort of tax on works and what we think about as a group. And so we're going to start off with some of our regulars, so to speak. And it's really nice to see, I think this just happened by chance, the first three regular talks today um, are coming from sort of a generational divide. We have a student in Davide, uh, we have a sort of mid-career uh, presentation from Heidi, and we have my mentor, uh, Jim Woolley, doing a presentation. And so you're hearing perspectives uh, on their use of Taxon Works from sort of veterans of, of using it. I want to say good morning to everyone and welcome you to my snapshot of the status of the small insect orders on Taxon Works. Uh, today, I'm just going to present a quick overview of the current status and future goals of these uh, 11 databases. So the small insect orders are comprised of eight orders, one suborder, one order minus a superfamily and one superfamily, most of which are in the polyneoptera, but a couple are in the paraneoptera. All of these databases have accompanying uh, taxon pages, which are indicated here with the plus TP, except for the uh, extinct order Permopsocida. So examining these one at a time in alphabetical order, uh, the cockroach species file currently has 5,027 valid species, which include a small number of fossil taxa. The recent taxonomic literature has been entered through last fall. Uh, there are 810 species images so far. And the near-term goals for this uh, database are to enter the taxonomic literature through the current date, to upload the photographs of holotypes of 242 species that were taken on a recent trip to Australia. And the long-term goals are to combine this with Isoptera species file, thereby uh, creating Blattodia species file, uh, begin the entry of taxonomic histories for each species, check the distributions for all species, and complete the entry of extinct species. Moving on to Coleorinca, we have 115 valid names in this database so far, including fossil taxa. The recent taxonomic literature has been entered through the current date, but there are no images on board yet. The near-term goals are to search for and upload any holotype depictions for this group. And the long-term goals are to check the level of the completion of the taxonomic histories and enter the distributions for all species. Dermaptera, the current status is 2056 valid species names. This includes the fossil taxa in this group. The recent taxonomic literature has been entered through the current date. There are no species images on board yet. The near-term goals for Dermaptera is to enter any and all Dermaptera catalogs, to enter missing taxonomic literature prior to 2016 when I came on board with this uh, group. And the long-term goals are to search for and upload holotype depictions, check the level of completion of the taxonomic histories, and enter distributions for the species on this, spe on this database. Ambiopter, the current status is 462 valid species names. This includes the fossil taxa in this group. The recent taxonomic literature is entered through the current date. There are no species images as of yet. The near-term goals are to find at least a holotype images to upload. And the long-term goal is to check the level of the completion of the individual taxonomic histories and enter distributions for all species. Grillo blattodia has 584 valid species names currently, including all fossil taxa for this group. The recent taxonomic literature is entered through the current date. There are no images as of yet. The near-term goals are to get images for this group uploaded. And the long-term goals are to check the level of completion of the taxonomic histories and enter distributions for all species. Isoptera species file is our one database that's could be been cre uh, created originally on TaxonWorks. The current status is uh, 3,182 valid names, including the fossil taxa. The recent taxonomic literature has been entered through last fall. Uh, the distribution records for this group are nearly complete. Uh, there are no species images as of yet. The near-term goals are to enter the recent taxonomic literature through the current date and to complete the distributions, which as I said, are nearly done, to search for and upload at a minimum some holotype depictions for this group. The long-term goals are to enter the taxonomic histories. 
Mantophasmatodia has 27 valid species name, including the fossil taxa. The recent taxonomic literature has been entered through the current date. The taxonomic histories are complete for this, and there are no images as of yet. The near-term goals are to search for and upload, uh, at a minimum, holotype depictions for this group, and the long-term goals are to enter distributions for all species. Permopsosida is our one order a database of an order of insects that's entirely extinct. The current status is 39 fossil species names. The taxonomic literature is entered through the current date. We don't have any species de uh, depictions yet. So the near term goal is to uh, search for and upload holotype depictions for this group. Placoptera has uh, 4377 valid species names, including the fossil taxa. The most recent taxon taxonomic literature has uh, been largely been entered through the current date. We're double checking on the most recent months. The distribution records are complete, though some migration issues are still being worked out for this database. Uh, the taxonomic histories are complete. Uh, there are no species images as of yet. So the near-term goals are to double check the recent uh, taxonomic literature for any missing papers and to search for and upload holotype depictions. The long-term goals are to check the taxonomic histories for completeness. Sacodia species file has been the subject of a huge push this year. Um, the current status is 11,926 valid species, including fossil taxa. We have finally incorporated the entirety of the Theraptera into a uh, Sacodia species file. The recent taxonomic literature is entered through last fall. The taxonomic histories, I would say, are at an intermediate state of completion, and there are no species images as of yet. The near-term goals are to complete the taxonomic literature through the current date and to search for and upload holotype depictions. The long-term goals are to enter the biological associations for this group, particularly the host species, to enter distributions for all species, and to complete the taxonomic histories. Zoraptor species file currently has 62 valid species names, including fossil taxa. The recent literature is uh, complete through the current date. Taxonomic histories are believed to be complete. That needs a few final checks. There are no species images entered as of yet. Uh, the near-term goal is to get species images uploaded for at least holotypes for this uh, database. And the long-term goals are to enter uh, distributions for all species and check the completeness, final check of the completion on the taxonomic histories. In terms of taxon pages for these databases, um, Incredibly, all 10 associated taxon pages are currently live, and the near-term goals are to complete gallery banners for nine of the taxon pages. I have one of those completed so far. If you have any interest in assisting in the effort of the work on these 11 databases, uh, please keep the small insect orders in mind when it comes to PDFs of any published papers of, uh, that in, involve any of these orders, including uh, extinct taxa in these orders, especially those that are rare, hard to find, or that we have missed. Um, your photographs and or drawings identified to species of any species in any of these orders that you would be willing for us to use uh, on our databases. We would also be interested in your spare time if you want to join the data input effort on any of the following orders, cockroach, dermaptera, isoptera, and Sicodia. To get involved in the small insect orders, you can reach out through any of the small order taxon pages, such as the example that I've listed here. You can send papers, images, or any other queries also to me at cockroachdoc at gmail.com. In closing, I would like to acknowledge um, Ed for all the support, uh, the Species File Taxon Work Brain Trust for the amazing job they have done on both the migration and getting 10 taxon pages live in such a short time. It's been an incredible effort and just amazingly smooth, fantastic work. The Orthopterist Society for the generous funding of my trip to Australia in pursuit of photographs of Blatodia holotypes. And of course, the insects who never fail to fascinate and inspire. So with that, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions you might have about small insect orders uh, presence on Taxon Works. Thank you, Heidi. We do have a question from Tom Gelrith. Yeah, cool. go ahead. Uh, you can- Do I read it or do you, yeah, do you do this alone it. or is this part of a team? 
effort. I do this yeah. alone, although um, it's certainly a team effort in terms of the um, the uh, the software having issues solved, having problems addressed. Um, that's the entirety of Species File Group um, through Gitter and through the filing of issues. Um, but the uh, work at maintaining, curating, keeping these up to date and searching out new uh, new papers as well as old. And now taking on several new efforts, for example, trying to make sure that the distributions are complete across the board, trying to, uh, so that our maps on taxon pages look as we would like them to look. So that when the public comes in and looks at our taxon pages, they can see um, snapshots of the entirety of the order or um, drill down to individual species and know where these species are found. We didn't really have that as so front and center on our old platform. And so um, this is becoming more of a priority. Also the, um, the push really to try and get some more depictions up, especially of holotypes is also moving up on the to-do list higher than it has um, been in the past. So Heidi, would you be willing to show us a page from one of the sites? Let's see if I can get it live. One. Here's an, an example of our, I would say our public facing interface now from Taxon Works. This is the one for Placopter species file and this is the home page. Um, from here, you can search uh, for Taxon for a taxon at any taxonomic level. And that will take you over, let's see. I don't I don't know if I can think of a species just name. Click, oh, just click on the just click on the one click off on the bottom right. See where there's a name in the in the picture on the right. Yeah, there you go. Click. There you go. Okay. Well there's a trick I didn't know about. Yeah. So here mm -hmm. here's an example if you were to go to a um an individual species from a taxon page, you might get a Christmas card, you might get, you get a distribution map with some uh, other more detailed information. And so Heidi, can we stay here for just a second? Sure. This is, this is a cool opportunity to both talk about what you mentioned and bring up what I mentioned earlier. If you look on the far right, where it says site map and DWC, the little black boxes just above the map, just above the map. There's two black boxes. This yeah. So these are the things for those of you, you don't have to click on anything. Okay. These are for those of you in the room who are interested in things like uh, getting automated access to the data. Um, one box will give you access to JSON, the JavaScript optic notation for everything on the page. Uh, the DWC will let get you Darwin core for the whole, for the whole page. You can also get that kind of data for each section on the page, um, and the maps are also a new feature. Matt, would you Matt, would you like to say something about those maps? Um, I think I think what we'll say is um, maybe maybe the opportunity is that there's you're getting you're going to hear a lot of sort of different perspectives, but uh, tomorrow we'll sort of connect out a lot of these different ideas. So think of this as hearing about taxon pages for the first time, and then. We'll tell you a little bit more about it. Jose will tell tell you about some of the technical nature of it and where it's headed. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about some mapping challenges that we have. There's a GIS special session on the third day, I believe, where we really have some, some nice time for discussion about the kind of challenges that we hit and hear about some really cool new tools from um, for georeferencing coming up too. So. So I, I don't think we'll say much more than that. I did have another question. Uh, John Morris asked about the links from the pages to PDFs of the literature reference in Taxon Works. Heidi, what what you do you want to answer that question? From Taxon pages? Yeah. Or from tech? I probably probably be better if you did. Okay. So yeah, because so I, I don't John, haven't had a chance um, to spend a lot of time on there yet. So very briefly, inside Taxon Works, we have I, I think it's a a. a a world-class reference manager. Um, think think capabilities like EndNote or, or uh, uh, Zotero, and you can manage documents inside of that um, inside of that tool. Because of copyright issues, etc., we have not yet figured out how best to share that those large reference libraries. So uh, there are 
tens of thousands of documents being stored in, in a research context. Um, to mine the literature, we have some automated tools for pulling out names, et cetera, but just having them there on hand, if you're a taxonomist, you're constantly um, aggregating and building data. But at the moment, John, we do not share documents out of this interface, um, largely because of the uh, social copyright issues. We do plan on making non-copyrighted uh, documents available, but that is a challenge. Um, um. One more thing I'd like to point out, and I see a question from Nikki. So, uh, and Maria Marta has some hand raised. Ooh, if you scroll up, Heidi, to the top again, segue just a, very quickly back to something I raised earlier. You don't need to click on it, but the little kitty cat on the top right, the little, yeah, the GitHub icon. Right so for all of you that have ever used a website, gone to a website, built a website, there are questions people have, there are issues people find. And isn't it nice not to get another email in your inbox? Uh, but here we have, you click there and you're able to then easily go and report an issue with the data or an issue with the website. Um, and this has been already, uh, people that have been used to doing it in the past with email are already finding this extremely useful. So we're seeing culture change and understanding uh, of the power of being able to use something like GitHub to manage traffic. And it also gives you a way to help um, understand the scope of all your issues. They're not all stuck inside your inbox, but they're uh, more broadly uh, accessible to everyone and uh, the metrics are available. So I have no idea the order of operations here. I see there's other raised hands, but I'm going to say too, we do have a QA. and a if you guys could stick future questions in there, but we're gonna just wing it here. Um, I see Matt, you just answered Nikki's question in the chat. Yeah, I could I could expand on it. So Nikki asks, are interactions with external users managed in the system? Um, in Heidi's call for papers, would these contributions be managed via contracts ex feature or externally through email? So Nikki, great questions. We are starting to see um, sort of those contracts emerge on the issue trackers at GitHub, and we're we're we've integrated links out to that. Um, we would also strongly encourage people to start training those people to join. And I think you'll hear from Jim Woolley about uh, the, the success of that approach in coming up here next. Um, but yeah, it's also be very interesting to think about expanding our API to be rights based and to sort of create those contracts or those um, issues as well. Um, so I think we still, what's our timing like, Jeff? Use our official typekeeper. Oh, I'm just I'm just trying to get a grasp for the timing here, Debbie. Her her, her time was originally supposed to go to 912. Our time. So we still so have, we still we're have, still lots of time. Yeah. We're still good. I'm just think of so, easy, evenly dividing it. Maria Marta had her hand up. It's not yep. up anymore. Yep. And John Harity has his hands up. So Maria yep. Marta, did you want to jump in? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hello. Uh, we also, we, well, I am. Um, managing the uh, orthopter species file. And we have also a taxon page for the orthopter species file for the public view. And we have links to the, but they are added uh, regarding to the links to the PDF of papers. We have links to the journals or to BHL if the paper is uh, already there. Uh, of, of course, those that are um, free of copyright, no? Uh, and those, yeah, there, there. So from there, you are pointed it, uh, Heidi. Yeah, yeah. Biodiversity library. You can yeah. uh, add links, external links uh, to the journals in the public view. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much, Marie Marta. Um, John, Erdi, John, you had your hand up. You wanted to say something. Yeah, I just I put it in the chat there. Um, I was curious on the top of the page there, Heidi, if you go up to the top again, and when you clicked on DWC, it lists a bunch of it pulls down a bunch of PDFs. Are those linkable? Uh, it, John, if I can interrupt and answer that, um, yeah. it pulled down a single text file. You saw other PDFs from her previous system, but that sends oh, yeah. a, a simplified yeah. uh, tab delimited Darwin Core formatted file that includes all of the data for this page. Okay, so thanks. Alina asks, thanks, Alina. Um, hi, I'm new to TaxonWorks. Are there similar pages for plant families? Alina, there, there are not right now. Um, we expanded in the last two years 
significantly the, our ability to handle plant nomenclature. Um, but as of yet, there are no um, public taxon page based projects there. There is, I think, one or two projects that are doing plant taxonomy. You'll hear about one from uh, Cam Webb tomorrow, I believe. Um, so uh, we would very much welcome um, those kinds of projects. I think if you're building a checklist or, a, a, you know, a project similar to this that has a lot of rich media distribution data, etc., that it's well suited for those types of projects. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, I work with the genus Monina in Polygalesi, and uh, I need, I want to finish uh, the monograph for Flora Neotropica. So I have a lot of information about the species on this genus. So I don't know if... Uh, like to work with one genus in one family. I don't know if it's possible. Sure. Like... Um, you'll hear more about our goals, uh, especially in the next session. But um, supporting monography is a really big one. There's a YouTube video that I can um, recommend that you watch that was shared about the, how uh, Taxon Works thinks about monography and certainly the origins and the spirit of Taxon Works. Um, originated in supporting monographic work. So uh, that could be, you know, a species group, a genus, you know, you know how much it work, work it takes to, to integrate all that data for a, for a paper. Uh, and so I think Taxon Works at least is, is in spirit, uh, focus on serving your needs to even just aggregate your data, maybe get it out of your Excel files and your Google Sheets, uh, maybe let you produce um, material examine sections or descriptions, help you manage your interactive keys. There's a lot of internal functionality that you'll you'll get a feel for in the next couple of days there. Thank you. Great. Other questions? Thanks everyone for chiming in. This is really the kind of conversations that we're hoping for these next three days is to, yeah. to, to really keep it open and um, get at the get at the questions that you have. I have one. Um, so Heidi, you, you asked a question about asking the community, the broader community for help, um, help to find images, for example. And I was wondering where where you normally look for them uh, and how we could help the community help each other. I mean, I often see post things like Taxicom, you know, Hey, everybody, does anybody have this paper? Uh, is that the best we can do for helping our community find these things? Are there other ideas people have for how we could help each other find these documents? And where do you well, look, Heidi? Um, there are images and there are images, Deb. My, I'm prioritizing at this point, really looking for images of the primary types. And okay. those are um, restricted. You're going to have to actually go to museums and take the photographs. Or if you're hopefully there are useful images that can be found in the original descriptions. But that's not always the case. Oh. Um, but in terms of the greater public, and this is where I, I really would like to harness citizen science, is there are people, there are hobbyists, there are passionate amateurs as well as professionals taking phenomenal images out there. And um, many of them are easily found on social media and these people can be contacted about um, how open they are, uh, like how they are cop copywriting their images. Um, what's really nice to have more of, as opposed to endless shots of things on pins or things in vials, is to have shots of, of species in situ. And, um, so I think that's something that you have to sort of head out into the wide open world to look for in social media has been a great asset with that. Um, I know uh, you've heard me mention um, the cockroach study group on Facebook, which is a, such a phenomenal resource. And I don't know if other orders have those kinds of resources in their own social media worlds. Um, but so I think there's lots of opportunities out there to go out and, and find images. If I can segue on yeah. that, uh, Debbie, yeah. that ties no, really nicely it, into that uh, conversation I, with iNaturalist, right? Yeah, exactly. Having, yes. that we'll have yes, yes. later this afternoon. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. an hour talk with iNaturalist and, and a discussion of how, for example, 
the citizen science observations there could make it into taxon works. So please join. Yeah, that another session. great resource for images and um, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's an interesting conversation for me because again, that's you're empowering the rest of us to help you, right? If that's a way in which all of us can help. Um, uh, absolutely, and, then, and I I mean I'm a big proponent of citizen science, and I've been arguing for years that that especially in entomology we need to try and follow to some extent the great lead that's been established by ornithologists who are the great harnesses harnessers of citizen scientists in the science world in the world of biology and so oh. um yeah absolutely happy to talk to get pictures from you know a passionate five-year-old all the way up to someone who's been professionally taking photographs uh, their whole life we've got three minutes left yeah and also um drawings as well which are often um more in many ways more useful than photographs so um there's a very interesting interaction between photography and illustration and so mm -hmm. that's why i mentioned that if there there are people out there that are ever because of the science or just because they're artists right that are ever making drawings of any of these uh especially if they are identified to species they'd be great greatly useful to us but even if they're not um i'd be happy to use anyone's artwork for example in the gallery banner that I'll be making for the different orders. So um, happy to hear from scientists, artists, and um, everything in between. Very cool to hear you mention artists, um, near and dear to my heart to connect art and science together. Um, uh, with that, I think we have a couple more questions and then it's time to go to the next talk. So quickly, uh, Matt, would you like to answer the uh, Anya's question. I'm new to the amazing world of taxon works. Yeah, I just typed in. Species. I just you typed did. an answer there. Um, I see it. Anya, I think the the answer is yes. We have some integration, and it's evolving quickly. Um, what we're seeing is that a lot of the global providers. I know there are folks from GBIF here that I see, and I know there are folks from resources like Checklist Bank are creating APIs, and you'll hear more about APIs from TaxonWorks as well, that allow our systems to more easily communicate between one another. And, and this is really game changing in a lot of ways. So for example, we're working on wrappers, Jeff will say a little bit about that, um, around Checklist Bank. And if Worms data are in Checklist Bank, that means we get to access the data. So technically, if your data are in Checklist Bank, um, we have examples of how they can be accessed and compared um, in TaxonWorks right now, but we know there's lots of opportunities for evolving the kind of functionality that you would need to do your work there. So, um, so your answer is yes, there are links, but there are no, there are probably not exactly the tools that you would need, but that's a longer discussion, I think. Could I just mention, Matt? that um, if I missed anyone's question, or if you think of any questions later on or um, weeks, days, weeks, or months from now, um, please feel free to contact me at uh, cockroachdoc cockroach at gmail.com uh, concerning any of these databases or um, uh, questions about taxon works or any way that um, I could help. Okay, thanks very much, Heidi. And thanks everyone for starting that conversation. Uh, next we have, uh, is it Davide or Jim? It's Jim, I believe. So uh, th this is basically uh, an update. Uh, I presented on this uh, last year at Taxon Works Together, and uh, I have uh, ruthlessly plagiarized my slides from last year. So if you like the images last year, uh, you'll be happy because they're pretty much the same. The content, of course, uh, there's so lots of updates and, and, and new things that have happened in the last year. So uh, first, uh, an introduction to the, to the superfamily Chalcedoidea. Uh, this is a group of now uh, some 53 families, three of which are extinct as far as we know. Uh, the, the number of families has almost doubled in the last year, and I'll say more about that later. Uh, and of course, these numbers change uh, from day to day, but uh, as of uh, really actually fr last Friday, there were over 27,000 valid uh, uh, species. And uh, I, I think it's about uh, 4,000 genera, 
3,500 genera, something like that. Don't remember off the top of my head. Most of these things are uh, parasitoids of other insects, uh, or there are many that are associated with, with, uh, with galls, either, either as gall makers or as inquilines or as parasitoids of galls. So they're very important in the natural and biological control of, of, of insect pests, of agriculture and forestry and medicine, uh, et cetera. So the, the Universal Chalcedonia database was established by uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, John Noyes at the Natural History Museum. And uh, th this really was a work of a lifetime for John. I think he started out with some card catalogs that his predecessors had left uh, there. And, uh, but he put it all into a relational database and uh, uh, it is still being served uh, online by uh, uh, the Natural History Museum. Uh, I'm not going to show you that link, uh, just in interest of time and because it's increasingly out of date, as, as you're going to see. Now, so John retired several years ago and uh, really stopped uh, updating most of the database in March 2019. So it's getting increasingly out of date. But uh, it's a massive, uh, it was a massive effort. I quite frankly don't have any idea how he did this because he's a, he's, a, he's a very productive, very productive scientist. Uh, but it's based on uh, something like, you know, over 56,000 publications that go back to the beginning of, of zoological nomenclature. And so this is an essential resource for, for taxonomists, biocontrol workers, ecologists, um, et cetera. And, and John uh, announced, you know, that when, when he retired, he wanted to uh, spend most of his time working on the, uh, his monographs of Insertia Costa Rica, that, you know, he, he wasn't going to be curating the database anymore. We, we sort of panicked. And uh, years ago, uh, we started discussions with, with Matt and others, John Harity, uh, uh, it, it, to move this to the new platform on, on Taxon Works. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get a, a large collaborative uh, NSF award to the three of us, and this provided some some resources. And so the data the data tables uh, were ported to Taxon Works in in 2019, and then there was a period of you know a year or two of, of debugging and ground proofing. There were all sorts of, of wrinkles and rocks in the road and twists and turns. Uh, you know, going from uh, John's uh, uh, relational database, which I think is still in uh, a paradox running in MS-DOS uh, to, to taxon works. But it's uh, essentially, uh, I think, stable and operational now. There's still a few loose ends here and there. We continue to meet weekly with the taxon work uh, team. But the idea here was that, you know, we knew that, that nobody could keep up with John Noyes, you know, in terms of, of a single person uh, keeping up with the calcidoid literature. And so, the idea was to provide a community curated uh, ongoing resource. And as you'll see, that's, I think, been uh, uh, largely successful. Uh, as of last week, there were 79 project members uh, around the world. Uh, about 12 of these people have been actively curating data. We had a big emphasis on, on training. Uh, we, we had a user manual. Many people have helped us with that. In particular, I'd like to thank Heidi for her help with the manual. And uh, we did a bunch of uh, uh, training tutorial videos, which is uh, largely yours truly, uh, uh, you know, taking you through the, uh, the, the, the steps of, uh, you know, how to, how to use the interface. And they're on YouTube uh, on the Taxon Works channel. Okay, so the, the, the it can, UCD uh, contains virtually all the literature uh, uh, from uh, the original uh, database at uh, in London, and uh, we've pretty much uh, kept it up to date. Uh, I think we have a I have a backlog of just a few papers that that aren't in the system, but but I've been doing uh, most of that. Uh, others have helped. John Harity has helped. Uh, most of the publications have PDF files available for download if you're on the curator, uh, you know, password protected uh, interface. And we're using tags to, uh, to uh, control uh, the workflow for, for curators. And so when, it, when, when, it, when we upload a paper to taxon work, we give it a, uh, you know, a tag of source on process. And then 
either, you know, it does contain nomenclatural acts, you know, new taxes, new synonymies, new combinations, whatever, or, or it does not. And then as people claim papers and begin working on them, there's a series of tags, you know, that they can apply, you know, that either the, the source has been completely processed, oops, uh, or, you know, it's, it's been processed except for the images or except for paratypes or, or whatever. So this is the model that we adopted. So, you know, to, to try and enable this, this, uh, this group approach to uh, curation. So uh, since the move to taxon works, we have uh, incorporated 834 new papers. Uh, 306 of these have been completely curated. And I'll say more about that in a minute. There's about 16 papers that are in progress, 27 papers that are unprocessed. Some of those may actually be uh, in progress. And then there's a huge backlog of, of, of uh, almost 500 papers that uh, don't, you know, these are papers on natural history or faunistics or uh, host records, uh, use in biological control, that sort of thing. And so that we really haven't tackled those yet. So how did we do this? Well, uh, We've used this barbecue concept, and this is an idea that we got from Debbie. Uh, the, I guess it's something that's common in the programmers uh, world, uh, but the idea is that there's a small group of people that work together online with a, with a common goal. And in our case, it's you know curation of, 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 of papers in, in, in UCD at Taxon Works. And so, you know, we, we start out with, uh, you know, synchronous uh, meeting where everybody's kind of, you know, engaged. And then we, and we sort of alternate between synchronous and asynchronous periods so that people can work independently most of the time. But, uh, you know, if somebody gets stuck or has a question, uh, uh, you know, they can, they, can, they can call the group or we can set up a, 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 a chat room, a separate chat room to, dis to discuss the issue. So we, move, we meet for two hours every other week. And uh, I, again, I'd like to thank Luke Crestline and, and, and Debbie uh, for getting us started on this. Uh, and here's a picture in the lower right there of, uh, of, of Texas style barbecue. That, that's something we take very seriously uh, down in, in this part of the world. This is the, uh, this is the team, the uh, barbecue team, Luke Crestline, uh, who helped us set it up. Uh, I'm not going to read all the institutions you can see there on the slides there. We have Mercia and Lucian in uh, Yash, Romania, Natalie in uh, London, Pamela in uh, Vitoria, Brazil, John Harity in uh, California, Riverside, uh, Petter uh, Janste is at uh, Charles University in Prague, and Chris Darling at the Royal Ontario Museum. There are a few others uh, that have been uh, helping us with this effort, but these are the people that sent me pictures. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to say about this and what it, it sort of warms my heart is that we really see, you know, a, 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 a good age distribution here, including, you know, a couple of, of, of you know, doddering old dinosaurs like myself and Harity and Darling. Uh, but then, you know, the next generation of, of people like Luke and Pamela, and then, uh, you know, mid mid career uh, people like Natalie and Mercia, et, et cetera. So uh, I, I really think, you know, with the level of interest in in the in the community here, that uh, that 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 UCD at Taxman Works is on a pretty pretty solid footing. We keep track of uh, all the papers that need to be curated in a, a Google sheet that everybody has access to. And so that way we can kind of stay organized about who's doing what and you know what papers still still need to be done. And I pretty much uh, uh, keep this up. So here's uh, just a, uh, uh, a, a screenshot of a, of, a, of, a, of a slide that I got in the project activities task and in, in taxon works. Uh, you know, the work that we've done over the last, uh, well, starting in 20, 2020, uh, and uh, it's reporting that 1,168 taxon names were created by 13 people. I'm not sure exactly where that number comes from, because there haven't been that many new protonyms. But in any case, uh, uh, you can see that uh, really a lot of people have been uh, uh, participating in uh, this effort. You can also see who the big the big winner is. Not not to brag too much, but uh, 
the green bars are yours truly. So uh, there's been a major reclassification of Chalcedoidea in the last year. Uh, and, and this is based on uh, some phylogenomics work that was done uh, by a very large team of people uh, led by Astrid Crow and Johnny Rosplus in Montpellier, France, uh, John Harity and his group at Riverside and many others. Uh, and this is a paper that is now in press in, in cladistics. So it's a, uh, you know, a, a reasonably authoritative uh, uh, phylogeny for the entire uh, uh, superfamily based on intense taxon sampling, two completely independent uh, phylogenomics data set, anchored hybrid enrichment uh, from the Riverside uh, group and uh, working with their colleagues at Florida State uh, and uh, uh, con ultra conserved elements uh, in, in uh, the uh, Astrid and John Eves group in, in Montpellier. And we combine the two data sets, analyze them separately every which way. And so now we think we finally have a pretty solid, uh, you know, phylogeny for the family. And this led to a, a, a major reclassification of, uh, of calcidoid families uh, that was published in this paper uh, that actually came out before the phylogenomics uh, was published last year in journal Hymenopter Research. Uh, from Hell's Heart, I Stab at Thee is actually a quote from uh, Melville's uh, Moby Dick. It's what uh, Captain Ahab said as he climbed onto the whale and tried to stick a spear into it or something. But uh, so it, in, in this paper, uh, uh, family terramality in particular, uh, we, we always knew it was an unnatural polyphyletic garbage can. But, you know, it wasn't until fairly recently that the, that the natural components became clear. And so terramality uh, now is, you know, become some, you know, 20 different families. And uh, so th this is the number of families went from, you know, 23, depending on how you counted them, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago to, to, now, to now 53. And I'm happy to say, and uh, proud to say that uh, all of this has now been incorporated into UCD attacks on work. So the new family classification is up uh, and, uh, it, you know, it's uh, so the, the, even though UCD London is still being curated and it is a magnificent interface, no question about it. It's wonderful. Uh, it's increasingly out of date. OK, just a couple of other loose ends. Uh, there were a lot of orphan names that came over from uh, uh, UCD London, uh, and we call these ghosts. Uh, they, they, they were duplicates of, of other names in the database. They, they came in, you know, by sometimes it was host information that were read as strings, you know, without species identifiers, misspelled names, nomen and neuter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we've made quite a concentrated effort to weed these things out. Uh, it was a priority of, of mine uh, for, for quite a while. I've sort of dropped it recently, need to, need to get back on it. So it's it's largely sorted out. There, there are some a few remaining issues. And uh, so, what's next? Images of primary types is you know Heidi was mentioning very very important. Uh, many of us you know curators of of UCD have uh, a huge libraries of images of of, uh, of species and, and images of, of primary types and. Uh, we need to find a way to get those into uh, into taxon works. We've also we had started some discussions of uh, moving the the the, li the library of images of of, of uh, calcidoid types at uh, Natural History Museum in Washington uh, to to taxon works, and that sort of I think stalled out about the time the pandemic hit. We that's probably something we should get back on. And then, as I mentioned, we have this huge backlog of papers on natural history, biology, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to tackle that. Um, but uh, and then finally, uh, Roger Burks and John Harity have uh, produced a, a, a wonderful new uh, public interface to UCD. And uh, John will be talking about this on uh, Thursday morning. And that's it. That's what I had to say. Thank you. Wow, very cool. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, we have now to move forward with the next topic. 
because I think we might have time for one question while we make the switch. Um, and it's really cool to hear you summarize the next steps and over how that overlaps with some of the issues that Heidi raised. Um, and I'd be interested to hear from people's ideas about the backlog of papers that you mentioned and what what we could do there. Yeah, we're all ears on that on that topic. <laughs> gotcha. We're, so we're, please we're almost managing to keep up with the taxonomic literature, although some of my colleagues keep insisting on producing monographs with like 300 new species names. But uh, you know, we're 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 pretty close, but uh, you know, for the for the for the taxonomic li literature, but we're falling way behind on the on the rest of it. Anybody have questions for Jim? Well, it's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. I never can decide. <laughs> I, I I have one. I'd like to okay. understand what you mean. So I know that the papers that have been published that involve new names. Those are ones you've been trying very hard to keep up with and you're making good progress. Then you mentioned other papers where there's a much larger backlog. What's the difference? What are those papers? Uh, they're papers that don't have any nomenclatural actions in them in the sense of the code. So there's no new taxa, there's no new synonymies. There's, but so those are things like uh, uh, many of them are are phonistic, you know, a checklist of such and such a taxon from Iran or you know that that sort of thing. A lot of them are uh, uh, papers on natural history, biology, host records. A lot of them are papers like natural enemies of you know olive scale in Greece or you know something like that, where there'd be a, there'd be a lot of host records and maybe some some biological information, but but no real taxonomy. And and so that that's what the backlog is, Deb. Got it. So do we need a combination, I'm imagining, of people and things like AI to help comb through those papers for all those delicious bits that you'd like to pull out? Is that what we're looking for? Pulling out the facts? I think I, yes, I think I think that's probably our only hope. At this point, that, that we would have some, you know, operational uh, way to do that, uh, you know, without an individual person sitting down and pulling all the information out paper by paper, uh, you know, something like the Plazi approach, maybe, uh, you know, so, so, something like that. Uh, I, otherwise, I just don't see us catching up on that. So, again, we're we're all ears in terms of ideas, you know. Other questions? Yeah, we have another question from Manuel, I believe. How is the connection between all the data compiled in TaxonWorks and a submitted paper? Did you compile everything online and then publish the papers, or was it more or less simultaneous? Good, great question, Manuel. Is it's you're hitting a uh, you're touching on really the paradigms of how data have been captured in the past versus how we might do it in the future. So. Uh, Jim, do you want to answer that? And I'm... Yeah, I think yes. I um, I'd say the emphasis in UCD has been on capturing the uh, the data in published papers. So the papers get published, and then and then we capture the information in in UCD. I there 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 are some of us, uh, Luke Cressline, for example, who has a project that that really is more of a kind of a taxonomic workbench. You know that's that's a work in progress where he's, you know, he's 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 establishing data matrices and interactive keys and so forth uh, for the family Aphelinidae, genus Incarcia in particular. But uh, you know the old pro, you know MX, which was you know in some in some respects a, a predecessor of, of taxon works. I think a lot of people were using that as a as a taxonomic workbench, including including my lab. Uh, that's not happening so much in in, in UCD at, at Taxon Works now. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's really nice. So, if I I'll chime in and then maybe we'll jump to 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 Davide. Really, uh, Manuel, you're identifying what we observe as a a fairly fundamental um, sort of categorization of the types of software that are out there. 
either the software was focused on capturing the past post publication or the software is focused on sort of creating the future right capturing your new data and moving it forward and taxon works is is um ambitious in that it hopes to do both and it hopes to do both because taxonomists do that naturally right you cite everything back to linnaeus 250 years ago and you have to cite but yet you have to create concepts and describe concepts that have no names so the balance of features now for capturing the past and moving to the future is really an open-ended um question as to how we prioritize those features going back and forth and uh, it's a discussion that we'll tackle uh, more in the next three days and if you want a vision for the kinds of things that we're hoping to support and move into in the midterm future the session that's coming up next on the future of feature species description will hint at some of the things that get us excited uh, so there's a question on that note, uh, sorry go ahead there's a question, There's a question from John Morris about uh, yep, cooperation yep. with zo zoological record. Matt, do you want to field that one? Yeah, I'm just yeah. reading it quick. Um, While you're reading that, I want to answer Tommy's too. I'd like to reiterate, that's kind of what I'm getting at. The something I asked Jim a long time ago is you, in UCD, you know, do you want to keep managing data with one person doing all the work to gather all the names. And Jim was like, we need a community way to do this. So the same thing I'm asking when I brought up the, what do we do about those other papers that Jim mentioned? Tommy is reiterating one theme he's hearing is not enough people. So how can Taxon Works be part of inviting uh, more people to contribute to these projects to help with these kinds of tasks? And then Matt, maybe John's question. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna punt John's question uh, to Dimitri. Dimitri, I've, hopefully he's lurking here to answer in chat, and just point out that Tommy, you you nailed the point of one of our goals for in the Taxon Works next session, and in our um, sort of final wrap up session, we'll be highlighting the point that um, growing community really needs to happen at multiple levels. We need not just people contributing to the curation of data, but also to the curation of the code base. And TaxonWorks has really sort of prided itself or prioritized making the development of the software um, as important as, as sort of the projects that use the software. So we really tried to go out of our way to make um, coding and adding new code to TaxonWorks accessible. So it's a big challenge at many, many levels, Tommy, there. So I think we need to move to the last talk and we'll keep tackling questions in chat and uh, in the Google Doc. So our last talk is from uh, Davide on Ichneumonoidia. Davide, take it away if you can. And thank you also for the invitation of giving this talk. And uh, this is the follow-up of what happened uh, since last year uh, where I we started working on on a database for the Economani Day, of course. And what we what are the updates and what are the challenges that we face it? And also what are the community that we built, if we built any community, of course. Uh, before starting though, I want to give um, a background of what we lost in 2016-15. And it was our own database which was used by many, many years, for many, many years by, by different uh, economic workers, and it was called Taxapad. In the beginning, Taxapad came into uh, a book version, two volumes, thousands of pages. And after that, it was moved uh, by uh, you et al. in 2005 into CD-ROMs, where you have all the information. Then it was, there was another update in 2012. And then the very last one was 2016, and it was coming in as a USB drive. Of course, all of this was uh, beyond a paywall. So you need to pay 200 and something dollar to actually access the database. And whenever you plug in your USB drive, this would look like very easy. It was built by uh, DKU, that, uh, built by DKU that substantially contain all these information for Ignamonide 
and Brakani Day, containing more than 52,000 valid names, more than 60,000 synonyms. There was biology section, a distribution section, and of course, a taxonomy and nomenclature. You can click on those windows and you can have those information. Of course, you can download data. And there was a huge uh, 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 section on the citation, the subsequent citation from the original description. However, we, in 2016, we lost any updates. Uh, some of us who bought this uh, database still has the uh, previous version, but uh, substantially we're missing almost seven, and I would say almost eight years of data of new taxa, new citation, new holotypes, and what else, right? So in last year, uh, I decided, well, we need something to do and we need to foster the community and Taxon Works, and I explained last year why Taxon Works was our best choice. However, in one year, this is what we faced, and I will start with the challenges that we faced and possibly overcome. So uh, you will see throughout the, 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 the presentation the beautiful faces of Ignomonids. Uh, there is nothing better, I think, to wake up in the morning with these, right? So the first main issue is there are too many names for Ignomonids. Right now we have 41 subfamilies. We have more than 1,600 genera, more than 25,000 valid names, species, and more than 1,400 subspecies. On top of this, we have more than 10,000 synonyms. If you add all, this, uh, all these up, it's gonna be possibly close to 35, 36,000 uh, names, all right? And this is not counting the upcoming new species, all right? However, too many names, but uh, uh, intersection with too few people working on it. Uh, I calculated, I put together the number of people that actually in recent years worked in one way or another with Ignomonids, and we are roughly 20 to 30 researchers, but not all of these are actually working on taxonomy or are interested in databasing. So they will be possibly not interested in um, helping out with the word Ignomani database. And many of these that are interested do not have the time to do it, allegedly. Then there is one major problem, which is an European focus. The majority of these researchers are right now based in Europe. And of course, if they build or if they want to build the, uh, uh, the database, their interest will be on regional scale, especially in Europe. So we will be missing possibly the majority of biodiversity, which is located in the tropics, of course. And of course, we need to handle, with this few people, more than 14,000 references, all right? So these are the challenges that we are still facing. We're, we're not done. We're not even close to be done. So to sort of overcome this challenge, uh, Myself and Filippo, that was mostly my help in this, we decided to create and give so, some sort of guidelines to the community. We were not being very successful, but at least we tried this sort of modular approach where we decided, okay, let's do a list this first few steps and then we can proceed with the rest. So our steps are the following. First, please include, of course, the names and the original publication with page numbers, at least in this way, we will be able to have a sort of backbone. On top of that, if you can, please add all the subsequent citations and combinations. Why all this? Because we think that this one for Ignomonid would be our sort of minimal working unit in which we can present the database, can be useful to the community, can be useful also to the public and could help us move forward. On top of this, if you can, after this sort of first phase, we can add the asserted distribution, we can, add, we can add all the type information, biological association, and then at the end, the images. Of course, some of us, uh, myself included, sometimes I added also the asserted distribution or type information according to the need, but the first two needs to be done, or we would like that to be done, all right? So with this sort of approach, we reach some milestones after one year of uh, working on this database. And those are the milestones. First of all, we have already more than 3,300 names. 
it's not enough. It's not even close to be done uh, because those include also invalid, unavailable names. But if you break it down according to subfamilies, you will see that the majority of these are included into one single subfamily, pneumonine, with more than 2,300 names included there. This is because I did all the work. That's my work, substantially. So one person, myself, doing that. But if we look at also at regional scale for the pneumonine, we will see that the African species are completed. So all the African taxa, which is a good majority, are included into taxon works. Right now, I'm tackled the, the Arctic part. But also, breaking down to smaller subfamily, thanks to Filippo that is present here, uh, we have three subfamilies completed fully, which is the Ale uh, Avelonathidine, the Agriotipine, and the Apeleutine. Those are, of course, small uh, subfamilies, but still, the work there is substantially done. And then we have also another collaborator that worked a lot uh, on the Anomalonine. Uh, is an independent researcher from France, and he tackled the Anomalonine, which is a sort of medium size. He started building up, and so we have more than 200 uh, names over there. So I would say not too shabby for the moment. Uh, it's looking pretty good for the few people that are working on it. But also another milestone, uh, we have the full complete, of course, synonym history, but also for, and this is one of the species that I've done, we have the entire taxonomic combination history, citation history for this. So we are tackling also all the references, all right? And I'm also placing some tags here and there so we can understand and quickly skim through it to understand what we have. Uh, this was a shared common uh, interest within the community because some people don't want to look for each paper, but they want to go for the keys to the species or they want to have sort of understanding who put the new combination and stuff like that. So I was told that this one was a cool thing for us. So it's there and it's use useful for the community. Another milestone is that right now, from zero, we have now more than 1,400 PDFs. And this is a community with uh, with the references, PDFs that you can download. Of course, this is a huge, huge amount of data, still 10% of the actual references that we uh, that are present in Taxafad. But uh, I think we're proceeding pretty well, thanks to the community, thanks to the people that are updating, especially also the new, the new references coming out. Also recently, uh, I was able to uh, create, build up, thanks to the species file group, the taxon pages. So it is available. It's very under the radar for the moment. Uh, it is just to show off. We're missing a lot of data, but at least we have something there that we can work on, show to the people and show the benefits of taxon works. And this for the community, I think it's very important. On all of this, however, I'm talking about community. I'm talking about the people that are doing this work, but uh, how the community moved and got empowered, sort of got built. Well, the community right now um, is kind of challenging to understand, but substantially we have, sorry about this. At the beginning, there was just me, okay? This naive Italian trying to change the world. Then all these four people in a matter of few months jumped in, saw the beauty of the database, the importance of tax and words, and now we can build together. And right now, I think we can say that we are global. All those dots are researchers around the world that one way or another are helping us to build the database. We have substantially hit almost all the continents, except for Oceania. We hope to get there at some point. Not all these peoples are actually able to work full time on the database. Uh, some of them that just give us some help in reaching out to the PDFs or emotional support, I would say. So with this 12 people, the community of 12 people, some someone more maybe will come at some point, uh, we can draw some conclusion of this year of trial within Tax and Works. And we have some easy spots, some easy stuff that we, uh, that we did not expect were very easy to handle. So first of all, navigating tax and works. At the beginning, it seems like an overwhelming experience. Actually, it's very easy. After a while, it's 
for everybody that I talk to seems to be relatively easy to navigate. Especially, uh, we are giving also some guidance to the researchers, so seems to be pretty easy on that point of view. Collecting references, we were uh, worried to not be able to collect all the references, especially the old one or in journals that are relatively minor. And But this one, thanks to the community, some people are reaching out, sending PDFs, or we are asking for PDFs and they're responding pretty uh, nicely. So we got that handled down. And then, of course, inputting information is relatively easy. Uh, Taxon works, and those of you who have never tried it, you will understand how easy it is to manage all this information, inputting them and uh, correlating them. However, the challenging parts, and I was not expecting this, was convincing the community at the beginning and also now of the usefulness of WID and Taxon works. WID is the word in the database. Uh, we still have some pushbacks, all right? Uh, but we are trying to destroy the wall over there. Then convincing also the community to at least collaborate indirectly, which means please send us your PDFs, send us your work that you've done. We cannot scout the entire uh, Google Scholar trying to find out that you describe a new species. You will lose citation, we will lose data. So please give us this. That was not something that was possibly correctly handled by us. And then, of course, the challenging is making people understand, I would say the community again, that the database are always a work in progress. There is no one an end product. So even though right now we cannot handle the entire names, at least we can work on it. And by the end of our lifetime, maybe we will have an end product. Uh, if there is a nuclear uh, uh, disruption, at least we don't have to worry about it, but at least we have something to work on right now that we can collaborate together. And with this one, I would like to thank the Species File Group, first of all, for the and Taxon Works community to help us out with the uh, setting up the project, helping out, being there every Wednesday. This is an incredible uh, opportunity for all of us. And then my supervisor, Barbara J. Sharonowski, that helped me out to work on this in my free time. The entire Kinomani community for being there and try to uh, understand us and possibly work with us. The curators of the World Kinomani database, without them, we would not be here. And then, of course, potential users and curators of the World Kinomani database that want to help out with us. And with this beautiful genitalia image of uh, Nick Namonet, I'm going to end my talk and I'm going to take any questions. Thank Thanks you, Davide. very much, Davide. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> go, Matt. Um, yeah, thanks. And it's it's been really great to have Davide um, involved with Taxon Works and involved in our weekly meetings. Um, it was especially, I guess, fulfilling to see that Davide really got, just just got that vision, right? Uh, when, he, when he jumped into Taxon Works, things resonated with him. And that's the kind of thing we were hoping for. So questions we have around five or so minutes before our break. Questions for Davide or or just in general versus those first three things. So I see one from Alicia. Uh, was there a challenge inputting the data from Taxopad into Taxon Works? This is a very good question and getting to the heart of the issue. So at the beginning of the community, and this is one of the pushback that we had from the community, I wanted to batch upload all the data, right? And that was one of the options, but we didn't go through that option for two main reasons. First of all, because it's very fun to actually update the names by hands. But not only that, the majority of the problem stems from the fact that um, Taxapad uh, being a fantastic resource is also was updated only by one person that was not necessarily an expert on the group and was updated in times where uh, PDFs or online resources were not available, all right? And so there are some mistakes or missing references. So this is for us the chance to actually double check the older literature and the older catalogs done by, for instance, Towns et al, and update without missing any references. 
uh, for instance, many of the invalid name or incorrect subsequent uh, spelling of the names were not recorded sometimes in UFL. Uh, also, distribution was not recorded. Uh, and so with this one, we are trying to uh, uh, sort of overcome that sort of um, problematic issues that you won't be able to see if you're not working on a catalog. So how did we solve that? We are actually including uh, uh, by hand each one of them. So I will chime in, Alicia, that there has been lots of discussion. I'm a hymenopterist as well. And um, there has been lots of discussion about how best to tackle this. And I think that um, there will still probably be efforts in trying to um, provide difference tools, for example, like from what Davide has, from what um, Taxopat has. So there's some emerging things coming from global names that can do very rapid comparison of, of, of uh, classifications that we hope to implement directly into TaxonWorks. There's also, uh, Taxopad also had some commercial private issues um, that had to be tackled. And it's now a very legacy data that we would have to spend some time processing. So I don't think that story is fully closed. Uh, my hope is that we can um, at least provide comparative yeah. tools that will facilitate uh, taking a lot of that hard work, regardless of the issues with it, and putting them into uh, Tax and Works. Aha, Alicia, thanks for that update. Um, I too worked on Bracona database for Bob Wharton a long time ago, I, not directly, but yeah. Um, other questions for, where did I see? Can we get the link in chat for the Universal Cal Calcidoria database on the World Ichneumonia Day database? Yeah. Uh, thanks, John, for the Calcid one. And Davide, I'm not sure if you're willing to share your, your public taxon pages or not, but if you are, please please add the link to it in chat. Yeah, it's still with the GitHub. Yeah, uh, yeah. So for those of you- coming yeah. together. Cool. Yeah, we're very excited to, to be able to provide a presentation layer on top of hopefully not only TaxonWorks data, but other platforms as well. Taxon Pages is agnostic. Um, I do want to say thank you to all of our speakers.